everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. Yes, that's right, the fuzzy slipper edition from my living room. We've got a great show today talking with a wonderful woman. Oh my gosh, she's so knowledgeable, and she runs one of the best museums probably on the East Coast. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm so glad you could join me today on another Cape Conversations. I'm talking with the Executive Director of Heritage Museums and Gardens, Ann Scott Putney. And she is so terrific. And she works in the, one of the most gorgeous places on Cape Cod and maybe even on all of the East Coast. Ann, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you, Melinda? I'm good. You know, considering pandemics, you know, they come and they go, you know. I'm pretty good. And plus, no one will ever know what I'm wearing on the bottom half of me. So that's all good. <laughs> agreed, agreed. No one will actually know that I'm actually in my kitchen. And this, no. this is a beautiful <laughs> picture of, of Heritage's Flume Fountain. There you I, go. And you know what? That Flume Fountain is absolutely stunning. It is so Thank beautiful. You. I've been fortunate to um, do the ceremonies as a JP in that spot and it is just lovely it is so beautiful and it's so romantic oh my goodness uh -huh. he's still my heart <laughs> he's still my heart it's a beautiful place so Anne. yes i heard through the grapevine heritage it's beautiful weather you're opening yes may 30th yay yay we're so excited yes but let me tell you a little bit more because we are so excited we're just bursting with this news melinda we are opening the gardens at Heritage on yeah. Saturday, May 30th. Yay! And we're so excited to open to the public then, seven days a week from 10 to 5 p.m. Um, this is all part of phase one of reopening Massachusetts. I imagine many people are very familiar now with the different phases of reopening, mm -hmm. but we're very um, honored actually to be part of those businesses that are able to open as part of phase one, which include parks and botanic gardens um, and some other outdoor um, you know, venues. So let me tell you what's gonna be open at Heritage. All okay. of our garden areas are going to be open, starting with this beautiful bloom fountain area, the daylily gardens all around it, the beautiful new McGraw Family Garden of the Senses, which mm -hmm. I know you've seen and you enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, right off of that is the maze, uh, which is really fun and has a new pathway to it. Um, the windmill garden, of course, which is part of the McGraw Family Garden of the Senses. The, lab, the labyrinth, um, all the hydrangea gardens will be open. Um, the lake walk down to Sham Pond, which is beautiful. Um, the McGinnis Family Garden and all the rhododendron open areas are going to be able to open because believe it or not this has been such a funny and odd couple of last months but we are actually at rhododendron time and we are opening just in time yep we're opening just in time to be at the height of rhododendron season Excellent. and so the lake walk along the lake all the bowls and trails and beautiful woodlands will be absolutely bursting with rhododendrons, pinks, oh, that's great. whites, reds, purples. It is just high season. And so that's what we are really looking forward to welcoming visitors to see then. Um, so Anne, I'm coming, yes. I'm a member, um, I'm, I'm a little bit older, uh, I'm a little bit nervous. I've been out of my house to maybe go to the grocery store. That's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to the gas station with the windows rolled up, you know, putting my credit card through. So tell me, Anne, how are people going to be safe there? It's a great question. And as you can imagine, we have been thinking about this and planning for this for the actually for the past several months. And so I want people to be aware that we are following all of the safety instructions from the state and i'll go over them in just a moment um, because our the safety and health of our visitors and the safety and health of our staff are absolutely paramount um, we want people to enjoy themselves and we also want them to be safe 
Mm -hmm. So here are a couple of things um, that we're doing that are consistent with what the governor's orders are telling us that we need to do in order to open as part of phase one. Um, the first thing actually I would want a member to know is that we're doing special member hours, um, member only hours on Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. So that's just something for members to be aware of. Uh, we are requiring that people buy their tickets online in advance. Mm -hmm. which is something that the governor has also recommended that we do. Mm -hmm. um, why are we doing this? Um, I think people are getting used to ordering things online and going to pick <laughs> yes. up. Um, and part of it is to be contactless or as contactless as possible. Right. Let me say that. But the other part is that um, part of the orders for this period of time are that we're, we're, um, we're not opened at our full capacity. We're actually open at 20% capacity. And so it's important for us for lots of reasons, primarily social distancing, so that we don't have a lot of people in any place, one place at a time, is that we're able to monitor how many people are in the garden at any one time. And so that's the, Okay, I'm ahead. sorry. What about the buildings? Will they be open or not yet? No, not yet. Um, we're, so our buildings are museum buildings, right. and museums will be open as part of phase three, I which would know. be at least at least six weeks from now. Beyond that, I can't tell you more. We're just following what the state is saying. Sure. So our buildings are not able to be open. Our restrooms are. Um, our cafe will be open for um, limited service, um, water, of course, uh, soda, um, snacks. Um, so you'll be able to have, you know, amenities and that sort of thing. Um, but the gardens are open and what oh, we're really hoping right that. now, yeah, is that in this beautiful weather and the rhododendron season that people will really take the opportunity to explore the gardens, maybe in ways that they haven't taken the time to do before. Um, but just to finish up on safety, so we're doing yeah. tickets yeah. online in advance. Um, we'll, you'll just be scanned in when you come. Of course, the governor has um, mandated that everyone have a mask with them in public, um, especially when you're not, and to wear it when you're not able to maintain social distance. And so we, are, of course, will be enforcing that and we'll also be enforcing, um, or I should say, urging people and reminding people to, to keep their social distance. Uh, and of course, to stay home if you're not feeling well. Sure. So those are all things that we feel are important. Um, to to have our visitors you know participate in when they come here for everybody's enjoyment and for everybody's health and safety um, we also know that outdoors is a great place to be and so yes. we're really thrilled actually truly thrilled that we're able to open the outdoors mm -hmm. for people to come and enjoy to find beauty to find a little peace um, i know a lot of people have really struggled or, or even experienced loss uh, certainly grief and disruption Right. during this time. And so we feel strongly that our gardens are a place, um, just let me just look at the beautiful flume behind me, um, where you can experience beauty and serenity and calm and, and maybe some much needed contemplation. Uh, so we're really happy to be able to offer that to the public. Oh, that's in, well, um, it is such a wonderful place to go and to reflect, um, mm -hmm. to be able to get your head together, kind of, so to speak, um, right, to, right. to certainly bring your family, but it's also a great place to go with just two people or by yourself. Um, granted, we've all spent a lot of time by ourselves, and some of that's good and some of that's bad. But, but, <laughs> or with some people. <laughs> with <the same> people. <laughs> that's true. You can just ask my husband about that one. Um, However, yeah. it is it is such a wonderful place, and and to go there and oh my God, the rhododendrons along the the walk along the pond is just, I mean, I'm sure this year they're going to be full full bloom because we've had such great weather for rhodo growing rhododendrons, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been it's been moist, mm -hmm. it's been cool, absolutely it's been too hot. Um, will there be any staff there or any? Uh, to help people out mm -hmm. if they need to, a, a direction or this or that. And I suppose I'll be wearing masks. Except. Yeah. Yep, we are. Um, so a couple of things that what you just said reminded me of. So let me share that with you. One, we're going to have a lot of signage just reminding people what, what to do, where to go, how to get there. 
Yep. Um, there might be some areas that people want to explore that they haven't done before. Um, we'll have maps available for everyone. We do have maps out on the campus and there'll be staff there to answer questions and help. We call it wayfinding help, with, you know, with wayfinding, yeah. certainly. Um, you mentioned, you talked about rhododendrons. I actually would love to pivot to tell you a little bit more about that because this time of year is when we typically have our rhododendron festival. <laughs> and of course, because we're not able to have large groups gather, we're not able to do some of the things in person that we normally would do. But, but um, just this week, we've launched our entire rhododendron festival online. And so, wow. yes, That's for those of you who... It's really fun, and I'd like to just tell, uh, share a couple of highlights about that. Everything is on our website at heritagemuseums.org. Um, but typically, we would have you know, tours and lectures and programming around rhododendrons. We have some wonderful videos online now uh, for rhododendron festival days uh, that talk about the history of the cultivation of rhododendrons on our property by a gentleman named Charles Dexter, who was one of the most internationally renowned hybridizers of rhododendrons and heritage is the home for much of the hybridization which basically means crossing them to crossing the best uh, qualities for this region to make the hardiest and most beautiful rhododendrons we have many many varieties here at um, heritage that were hybridized here but you can watch a fun video about the history of that um, some videos with tips for pruning and taking care of your own rhododendrons at home we have some really fun crafts um, online um, related to rhododendrons you to do at home with kids. We have a rhododendron scavenger hunt that you can do in your own neighborhood or here at Heritage, which is fun. Um, we also have, and I am training for it right now, so I invite anybody watching to join me out there on the road. Um, typically this year we have what's called our run for the roadies our run for the rhododendrons it's a 5k walk or run on the campus uh, or on the grounds at heritage um, we're not quite able to do that this year because um, of gathering limitations but we are doing it virtually and so let me yeah which is really fun so let me tell you what that means okay it basically means if you're if you're if you're a runner or a walker um, or aspire to be <laughs> you can register <laughs> register online for uh, 15 or 20 dollars um, get your virtual swag bag and then go out and walk or run a 5k race or a 5k walk or run to benefit heritage oh, and send us your pictures and we'll post them online so we want we, we started it last year the in-person race it was a great success we had a lot of fun um, and we didn't want to skip a beat and so we're inviting people to take a virtual run or walk or jog in their own neighborhood um, right. and do it for the benefit of heritage. So I'm going to be doing that this weekend, posting my pictures. I got my t-shirt, my big t-shirt online at the heritage gift shop. Yeah. Uh, run for the, well, the gift shop is up and running, right? I mean, yes, it is. It I've is. always said, I mean, you know, I worked there a lot, 122 years. I ago. know you did. So you, you're in the know. Uh, but I, I am in the know about the gift shop. It was wonderful when I worked there. Then it even got better. And I heard now it's even more sensational. So, but you can, you, the gift shop is up online and you can find things there, gifts for friends and family and all kinds of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Yes, absolutely. You can order things online. We have an online gift shop. Um, it's pickup or um, delivery if you live in Sandwich. The wow. other just real exciting thing that we're doing right now that has been such a great success because I know many, well, of course, this is garden time of the year right now. And since so many people have been homebound, um, many people have decided that that means garden bound and garden, um, garden centric. So lots and lots of folks are working in our gardens right now. And it's certainly yeah. showing around Sandwich, many gorgeous gardens. We're having a plant sale, an yeah. online plant sale right now and a beautiful selection of perennials um, so uh, which have been selected by our director of horticulture Wes Lutz who some people might know from his column in uh, the sandwich enterprise uh, so obviously he's an he expert on horticulture interview. and he does a great interview <laughs> and he does and he's an expert and so yeah of course Melinda you would know that yes 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 he's <laughs> chock full of knowledge and chock full of I have to say good taste yeah. Uh, when it comes to plants and so you can um so what am i so 
you can bring a little bit of heritage home to you uh, and purchase your plants online at Heritage. And then uh, it's a reservation, you know, you come by and pick them up basically. Okay. So that's something else that's going on right now, because again, we're trying to be of service to our community and, um, you know, trying to bring pieces of heritage to people that we can um, until such time as we're, as we're opening, which is soon. Yes. Well, good. Well, yeah, May 30th. So it's what, a week away, maybe? Just two weeks. A week from Saturday, a week from, yeah, it's a week ago, a week. A week yeah. Away. Oh, wow. It's so exciting. So once Heritage gets opened, mm -hmm. where do you go from here? Oh, that's a great question. You know, just, or do you have things planned? Do you think mm -hmm. tentatively planned? I mean, now you know you can use the outside. So I'm sure that's right. just like a huge canvas you can do many things on. Exactly. So here's some things to look forward to. Um, so our gardens opening are part of phase one, reopening Massachusetts. In phase two, which we understand will be three weeks after phase one, if all goes well, we'll be able to open up our retail shop indoors for shopping inside with capacity limits, along with other retail, of course, mm -hmm. in the area. Yeah. Um, and restaurants will be opening at some point in there too, and our cafe right. will be more able to open and more able to serve. Yeah. Uh, and then phase three, which is three weeks after that, if all goes well, mm -hmm. we'll be able to open up our museums. And so we have some fabulous exhibitions inside uh -huh. but before we get there let me share with you what's also coming outside which i'm really excited about okay. um right toward the end of june we'll be installing what we call our bugs birds and bricks exhibition which is a series of 24 just really fun um, large-scale sculptures of yeah. of birds dragonflies butterflies yeah. bugs made out of Legos, Lego oh sculptures. Oh my gosh, how wonderful. And, and isn't that fun? Um, and they're all, you know, pollinators and other critters that you would find in this part of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right behind me at the Flume Fountain, there will be a really fun uh, Lego dragonfly installed along the, the edge of the fountain. Um, in other places, you'll find a flock of, of, I guess it's not a flock of butterflies, whatever, that would be a little flock of birds. Um, and other really fun outdoor Lego, Lego sculptures. So that will be installed uh, later in June before we open the museums. So what? we're doing kind of a cascading opening of these of this outdoor exhibition. And then when the doors open indoors, um, we have three super um, exhibits that I'm really looking forward to. I know so many people love the cars, the antique cars at Heritage. Indoors um, at the car barn, we'll have the exhibition called From Carriage to Classic, How uh, Automobiles Transformed American Culture. And last year we did one version of that. This year we're changing out all the cars and from the end of the 1800s right up through the 1960s, you can see a whole chronological progression of the evolution of car um, innovation and technology and all the fabulous design and beauty and ego and everything else that goes with it um, that really show how our American culture has been completely shaped by, by the automobile and that they're beautiful cars. And so we look forward to sharing that. Um, the other, um, we have actually two other exhibits. Um, the new one that we're so excited that we've produced ourselves that goes along with the outdoor Lego exhibit is an indoor exhibit called Let's Play. And it's very colorful. It's the history of toy making and toys and games in New England. And it's designed um, to be very interactive. Um, of course, we have some limitations on that now, uh, but there will people will be able to see how toy uh, people will be able to see the examples of toys that were originated, created, and manufactured here in, in New England, be able to see large scale. You know, sort of larger than life versions of some of those board games, be able to play some of the games. And in the center of the room, in the center of the gallery, is a replica of a toy maker studio. So you can actually kind of metaphorically look over the shoulder of um, the process of taking a toy from idea to creation with my little pony as the example. So you can oh, see how my little pony I, I have was a uh, envisioned okay. and creative. So the, the Legos are going to be throughout, and they're going to be big, right? You'll be able to see outdoors. Them. Outdoors. That's big outdoors. Where right. will the toy exhibit be? 
what building? So, mm -hmm. so the building is called the Sec uh, Special Exhibition Gallery. Some people know it as the Military Museum. Ah, yes. It's on the parade grounds. It's okay. a long, low, dark building made out of okay. wood. Um, some people remember it as a military museum. These days we use it for special, ex uh, special exhibits, and that's where that will be. Oh, good. And some people know it as where Santa's or Mrs. Santa Claus is during Gardens Glow. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, and also, where uh, what's going on in the round barn? Anything? Or not the round barn, the uh, carousel. The, the carousel, right? Yep. Yeah. So we're um, so we have a brand new exhibit up there. Also, um, it's it's special pieces out of our permanent collection. And there's one, actually two things that I, I think are of interest to people, certainly, I mean, many of them are, but two things I would highlight. One is that there's a jewelry collection that we're showing in the special, um, in that gallery up there um, that were made by a woman from this part of the world, um, whose name, I'm, I'm sorry, is escaping me right now, okay. but she used um, glass, like like was she used glass in her jewelry designs that comes from sandwich glass making and right. so it's a, and she did this right around the turn of the 20th century so in the oh. early 1900s that's what that ex exhibition is like and then also adjacent to that um we're doing a really interesting exhibition in collaboration with the Wampanoag tribe and we're, it's part of the Plymouth 400, which has had to, I know, reinvent itself oh, and reimagine okay. itself. Um, but we are able to show this, this particular story, it's called Our Story. Mm -hmm. And it's three chapters in the history of the Wampanoag people from what the time that they called First Contact, which is when the Wampanoag leaders met or encountered the pilgrims okay. at Plymouth. And then um, a total of three different turning points in the history of, of the Wampanoag. Sure. And that will be also in that in that building adjacent oh. to the carousel area. Excellent, excellent. So and we're the, excited about that too. Now, this is a question and it might be sensitive. Will the carousel be open? You know, it's a really great, it's a really great question. Yeah, um, it's been thinking, you know? Yeah, well, let me just say, it will open when we're allowed to open it. Gotcha. And, it's an amusement device. And so when amusement devices are allowed to be open, I believe that's phase three, but I don't want to misspeak that. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll open it when we're allowed to do so. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done a lot of these shows with lots of different people around town. Um, and I always ask them this question kind of towards the end of the interview or the end of the uh -huh. conversation, as I call it. Um, how have you been holding up? What have you been doing to keep yourself sane? How how do you feel about about what's going on? Are you you feeling feeling okay? I mean, a lot of people are stressed, but I think it's kind of nice when people can say, "Yeah, I've been stressed, but this is what I did." And how about yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, personally, and my family, we're just fine. We've Good. been doing just fine. My heart breaks for people who whose lives have really been devastated. And I think I, I think about that a lot. And I know that we all do. Yeah. So that's always weighing heavily in my heart. Um, uh, and, and that's why I think a place like a garden is so important, which I, which I said earlier. Um, at Heritage, though, it's we've really taken this as an opportunity to reinvent ourselves in a way that allows us to continue to serve our community yeah. and keep our mission front and central um, by doing things online and by reimagining how we can still deliver the really awesome heritage experience to people mm -hmm. um, even though they might be sitting at home and, and so are we <laughs> right. right and so it's actually been a really wonderful i don't want to say wonderful a sort of fascinating challenge to rise to mm -hmm. to consider how we do um how people can experience heritage without actually being here as they're getting ready to be here. Right. And I would say right. that we've been really successful in doing that. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. And to know that on in Sandwich, Massachusetts, this little crazy village, right? Uh, that there is such uh, 53 acres, is it? Is that how many acres? I can't remember. 53 acres? 100 100 acres. 100 acres. Oh, 100 acres. 100 school. acres. 100 acres school. I remember now. How could I forget that? Mm -hmm. um, that there are um, 
that there's a place like this where people can go and you can get a membership, right? You can go in for the day or you can buy a membership, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And to buy a membership, it's, yes, you it's can buy all membership. online, all online, right? Easy, easy peasy, mm -hmm. as I like to say. Mm -hmm. So you, mm -hmm. you have individual memberships. It starts at individual memberships on up. You know, actually we started, we had before, but we started something even, yep. We, it goes two people, four people, six people ah. um, is what you can buy your memberships for. Nice. And that makes it really easy. So you don't have to define what a family is or call it a couple or anything like that. Great. It just so, let's say you buy a two person membership, you can come and the second person is whoever you want it to be. Oh, nice. That's as your, as your member. Sure. Excellent. 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 And yes. all this, so all that's available online to be purchased. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. And yeah. Uh, now, just so you know, yeah. we're going to, we, um, by the magic mm -hmm. of television, they're going to show a lot of beautiful places uh, during this conversation that are at Heritage. Um, they actually filmed it yesterday, is my understanding. Yesterday Ooh, afternoon good. was so gorgeous. So, um, I, I, which I just can't wait to see. Um, I'm very excited about taking the virtual tour though. I'm very excited about that. I'm, that sounds like, sounds absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. All right, yes. Anne, it has been, Thank a, you, Melinda. it has been a pleasure beyond belief to talk to you. We used to see each other at, um, chamber meetings and now we don't even get to do that. <laughs> I have to laugh. They I know. We have to see each other on Zoom, but it's better. I know. I know. I think the last time we were at Best t -shirt. Linda, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It, it has been a, it's, it's That's been right. That's right. Yeah, Best We were. Yep, yep. It's been a pleasure, and thank you again for your time, and thank you for being yep. here in Sandwich. We appreciate you. Oh, Melinda, thanks so much. It's great to have friends like you. And yeah. I look forward to seeing you on the trails at All Heritage, right. along with everybody else. All right. We'll be there. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, it's hard to believe during a pandemic that Heritage Museums and Gardens has all this great stuff going to be happening. It is so much fun. You can go online and do some things, and then you can go to the museum and take beautiful walks through those gorgeous trails. Oh my goodness, it is so beautiful there. And wouldn't you know it, the roadies will be out, and that's what it's all about. So I want to thank you today for joining me in talking with Anne, and I'll see you again on another Cape Conversations.